What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. And it's your girl, Faith. We're here with the Saga Review by Brian K. Vaughn, so stay tuned. All right, so we both just got done reading Saga. A lot of people have recommended it. I, I want to start off by saying, overall, I definitely enjoyed the story. I liked the characters. I liked um, the narration by Hazel, who is the little girl on the cover of these. And it's basically a story about her parents, how they got together, and like how they had her. Is that kind of a good... Yeah. It's just a story of her family's, like... It's a story of her family. So, I just want to put this out there. There's a lot of sex going on in this book. Straight, yeah. straight sex, homosexual sex, trans gender or yeah there's like all kind like yeah it's a very heavily sexual book and there is you're like a close-up of like <laughs> it's just really you got a close-up of wee wees and pee pees <laughs> you got a close-up of holes and poles uh, a vaginal birth <laughs> close-up right but um <laughs> so it's very it's very sexual and it's also very political like you could tell brian k vaughn kind of is putting his own political views in this book which yeah. personally if I agree or disagree, I can still enjoy the story. It yeah, like, that's how I felt too. I was like, I mean, like they, they definitely have like a pro life thing going on, right? With that whole abortion town thing, Oof. that was crazy. And then then they have like a whole war thing. So the big thing yeah. is that Hazel, this baby. But the political stuff, like those topics, are quickly pat. Like they sort of touch on it and then they keep it moving. It's yeah. not like drawn out. Yeah, and, and I don't think it tries to persuade you as a reader to follow those same views. Right. That's just like the climate of this book. Right. So the big thing is that this baby Hazel is, um, she's basically a, a mixed species baby. They they have the horns and then you have the wings. It's like a um, Romeo and Juliet type thing. But Romeo and Juliet never had a kid, though. I know, but I mean, like, that's like this the, 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 the dynamic between the parents are from two battling sides. It is. So the um, the winged creatures who have, like, all different types of wings, like uh, the mother, Alana, has, like, pixie type of wings, but then there's a guy with, like, bat wings, and there's some with angel wings. Yeah, some have feathers, some have scales, some are leathery, some are soft. Like, it's, they're just, it's, you just have, oh, that's what I like, that's what was one thing I was going to say that I liked about the stories. It's just like a version of wings or a version of horns, any kind of horns. Right. So the wings are from the planet called Landfall, right? Right. And uh, they're like a ever-moving technology. They, they throw away their old stuff. They're always uh, moving, forward. moving forward to the future. And then their moon, which is called Wreath, is home to the horns. And our main character, Marco, has horns like a ram. But then you have some people who have horns like... Like an antelope or a moose right. or a, yeah. And they're very uh, culture driven and they always, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, the, 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 the landfall winged pe people are like the future and the moon horned people are very much rooted in past and tradition. In, in and tradition, like, that's exactly what I was thinking. And they are able to like cast spells, which Marco, our main male protag uh, protagonist, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, w would say it's, you consider a magic, but it's really just arranging molecules type of stuff. They have their own language, which is called blue, and every time they're speaking their language, it's, their language is in blue, but it's not letters that yeah, we can it's comprehend. Just, it's just... I'm just like, I hope I understand. <laughs> so what's going on, basically the, the planet and its moon have been at war for like a long ass time. And so much to where like they started like saying, okay, we're not going to have war on our planet or moon anymore. Because if we destroy either or, the other can't be. So they start taking the battle elsewhere. And basically we meet uh, Alana and Marco. And Alana is a army military type person. And, and he's a prisoner. And they end up falling in love. And, and a lot of it has to do with uh, a romance novel that Alana reads by this guy. I forget the exact name. is His Heist. His last name is Heist. Yeah. He's just... But it's kind of like one of those supermarket romance novels where the guy's got his shirt off and he's looking like Fabio. He's on a horse and yeah. she's like, oh. I think Brian, this is a guy that's writing this. I feel like he wrote Alana like perfect like her i love the art for her she like yeah. her the way she like like the emotions but like he he knows how to write females and like relationships and i was like yo he really killed it like i would have thought it was a female writer the way that he wrote um i don't know if that's sexist but <laughs> he he really knew how to write a lot and i really like that um 
you're saying I don't I don't know if it's futuristic. It's just it's definitely a space opera type of book, yes. right? Like um there's a lot of space traveling. They actually have a really cool um organic tree like spaceship. Yeah, that I was like yeah. So then you have um they have a daughter Hazel and basically it's like going against everything that the war stands for. If people knew that these two species were able to conceive a child successfully it would mess up like the whole political structure because she's like the first ever they they, they kind of hate each other oh those are the moonies how could you touch a moonie right. and i'm like don't you see that she's fine as fuck they like, call them wing nuts they're like yeah it's, it's, do they ever tell us the actual name of their species no right it's just the no. wings and the but horn. there's al- no but there's also other planets with other crazy looking creatures that inhabit them so so because of the war because they couldn't fight each other because, again, if they destroyed the planet or the moon, it, it would fuck up the whole shit. That's the point, right? So they had to contract their war to other planets. Mm-hmm. And so they've got these people who have te- televisions, different types of televisions for heads. So, so they're androids, and they have these television heads, and they're like royalty, and they have, well, they have royalty amongst their civilization. Like, if your screen is colored, that's how they tell you're royal. If your screen or is black and white, you're just a regular The person. king has a huge-ass flat screen. Yes. And then, like, the janitor guy has, like, a rabbit ear yeah, type like thing. Yeah, like an old analog style. And it's funny because those androids, they're they are weird. They don't they don't act like androids. They very, they're very sexual. Yeah. They're always having sex with each other. And they can't really hide their emotions. So, like... Their screen will show, show an image that, like, like if they're angry, a, a roaring lion. Which is like really a, cool. Yeah, like... Stuff like that. So you have those androids, and then you also have this big mercenary facet of this story, oh, yeah, 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 where you yeah, have yeah. if you're a, if you're a merc, your name is not Gem or or Mister Mint. It's the Gem Mint. So you have like the Will, which is like our main kind of uh, mercenary. Uh, then you have like his love interest, the Stalk, which is like this big arachnid she's a spider. Huge spider. She's creepy looking. And they Wait, show like, them have sex. Yeah, that, it's just, <laughs> everything is having sex. What are some other ones? The will, the stock. Anyway, there's a couple different ones like that. Yeah. But basically, it's like a story. Hazel's telling the story of her parents. I love all her narrated scenes. Like, I always felt it's those a, super easy to read. Yeah, they're, they're, those are good. And, and basically, they get split up. Hazel gets taken. Then they find Hazel, but then Marco's gone. Then Marco gets back, and then Alana's gone. So it's kind of a lot of... We got to get our family back together. There's some vaginal. Uh, what do you call that? Squirting. She's squirting in his face. Jeez. We, we got to flip through these books, but it might not be for everyone. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. These three deluxe editions collect the 54 issues of Saga, and they have not come out with a new issue since June of 2018. So it's been a year since we've had a new issue. But I've researched this a little bit, and Brian K. Vaughn says that there is plans to do another 54 issues, which will complete this as a 108-issue epic. I'm looking forward to the next part of Yo, the story. Yo, the only thing is, it's like, dang, are we going to follow it on single issues? Yo, we didn't even talk about the grandmother who was, like, hard as hell. She wants to stay in prison, and she's getting all these tattoos. She got started getting tied yeah, up. So, yeah, like, the, it's like meet the parents, and the parents have to accept the fact that Marco's with this wingnut. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That was, I mean, that was a cool part of the story. But I, I really enjoyed Alana. I, I, I really liked her character a lot. Mm-hmm. So you were reading the book, too, ahead of me, and you were like, you're not going to like her anymore. Why? Because she starts kind of, like, doing the get, drugs yeah, and yeah, stuff. She, yeah, I didn't really like that. She started being a little bit selfish, right? Yeah. You know, sometimes we get like that. <laughs> Be like that sometimes. But definitely, I love Saga. Like, I'm not the type to be like, oh, I don't agree with this political stance. It's a, it's an agenda. I'm Close out. book. I'm out of here. I was like, hey, that's how you feel? You told a good story? Cool. You know, I don't really necessarily have to agree. And I don't think, I'm not saying I disagree. I don't really think I disagree. Really, with that kind of shit, I'm a guy. I don't really care. Look, do <laughs> me a favor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really care. But I really like the story. There, It, it does end on a big cliffhanger, um, which is kind of like, damn, I hope they really write the rest of this. I don't see how you call it a cliffhanger, though, because you know what's going to happen. There's I didn't know no, that was going to happen. There, I mean, no, you know what's going to happen after that. No, I don't uh, know. Oh, I, I totally predict what's <laughs> going to happen after that. I know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, is there anything else that we want to touch on before we start flipping uh, that's through? That's what I'm saying. We should flip through the book really quick and just make sure we touch on it. Well, we'll flip through it together and yeah. show everybody the artwork. No? Hold on. I like how the Will, which is the head merc, he gets really hurt. And the only way to heal him is they need the um, 
the sperm of a, a dragon. Dra- yeah, dragon sperm. What do they call it? They don't call it sperm, though. They call it um, this spunk. Is the we need the spunk oh, of a yeah. dragon. And you see all these... They go to try to find this dragon. They see all these female dragons that are, like, super intimidating. And then they find the male they look dragon. They like large... You're thinking dragon-like in Game of Thrones. They're like iguanas. They're like a kimono dragon. Like but a, they're huge. But then they find the kimono. male, and he's, like, giving himself head. And oh, yeah. And they get his spunk. And then they got to put the IV in the will... And then he ends up gaining a lot of weight. Like, you, next time you see him, he's fat as hell. And you're like, yo, that was that damn dragon spunk. Oh, God. <laughs> but the, it looked like lava. It was crazy, man. So gross. All right, so let's flip through these books together. We're going to get an idea of the art, which I really liked. Hold, hold on, I hold think on. Fiona, it's Fiona, right? Um, Fiona Staples does a really good job of displaying emotion in the art, in their face and stuff, and their mannerisms. I really enjoyed it. What are you looking for? I don't know. I just want to make sure that we said everything about the story that... We can say it while we're flipping through. Oh, it's just so good. All right, so look, let's go ahead and take an overshot of the artwork uh, from Saga, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. All right, so looking at the first deluxe edition, book one, these contain 18 issues each, I believe, right? 16. Isn't it? No, 6, 12, 18. I don't think so. I think it's 16. Ah, that's 18. Yeah. Because I remember I was reading it like six uh, issue oh, yeah, arcs yeah, yeah, yeah. at a time. Okay, I was thinking four at a time. Or, I don't know. So here is the beginning. Here goes Alana. Looks like she's having the baby. This is Alana. This is Marco. That's Hazel. So the first scene is like she's giving birth. So you could already see the kind of tone. And look at Fiona Stable's art. Like right away, it's like she really she really captures the emotion well, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, just to let you know, we're probably going to see a lot of genitalia yeah. <laughs> moving forward. All right, so they got their baby. This this forbidden oh, love. Oh, we didn't even oh, talk about... Fucking oh, fucking Lion God. Cat. How did we not... That's why Yo. I say we were supposed to flip through the book to see stuff. Lion Cat is probably my favorite comic book character of all Yo, time. Yo, so good. So Lion Cat is like a human lie detector. Anytime Lion Cat's around and somebody starts saying something, if they're lying... Lying. How do you picture it in your head? That, exactly like how you Lying. Yeah, like definitely <laughs> like... Not Yo, I fucking love Lion Cat. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Oh, did you notice that this horn, she was like a unicorn horn? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. So you got Lion Cat, and then this is the Will. So he's our Merc. He's a mercenary, but they call him freelancers. Yeah, he's a freelancer. And that's like his ship, right? The Which sea. is like an acorn or something like that. It's funny how like their spaceships are not like uh, Star Trek type spaceships. Then you have this character. I was going to mention her. She's basically a, a ghost. What's her name? Liz? Uh, uh, Liz? Eliza? Eliza. So welcome to Sextillion. So this is a planet where... I feel like the androids like to go there a lot, where it's just straight up sex. There's so many... Car- this is like such a... Is that trope? They do it in all these, but they did it in yeah. uh, Inkle, too. Oh, so here's a lot of people having sex. Here's like a human centipede type character. Oh, so this is some guy banging like this big chick. There's a, Look at there's, this. A, there's a couple of people there. Look at this. Reach around. You actually see, like, penetration and stuff. It's crazy. I like this sword. He can kind of cut through reality and, like, time travel. Or not time travel, but, like, teleport almost, right? Yeah. I like that. It's a very a very fantasy. I like when they do these clean white pages like that. Yeah, me too. All right, cool. This reminds me of, like, Final Fantasy VII, like, going to, like, that casino place. Uh-huh. All right, this is them on that ship. This is Marco's parents. His mother gets like a crazy arc, yeah, right? She, yeah, she's hardcore. She was a soldier also, so okay. she doesn't fucking play around. So you can see her with her her pixie wings, and that's their like their their tree type rocket ship. That's Gwendolyn, which, you know, I guess we don't need to say who she is. Yeah, I know. How did we forget about Lion How do you forget? I don't know, because I was just trying to catch everything else. Here goes one of our TV head Android guys. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people like, um, not this family, but the character Gus. Oh, here goes Heist, who's the writer of the novel. You know who I hated the most out of this book? The freaking re- reporter couple. Oh, yeah. Anytime was... they had dialogue. Yeah. So funny. Anytime they had dialogue, I was like, oh, these guys. I think his name, I can't, I can't remember their names. Doff? 
Like Upsh- Dolph and Upshaw? Yeah. Upshire? Upshire? This is Robot, uh, Prince Robot 4, who you always wanted to call Ivy. I'm just like, just, I just can't. I hate, the, I hate Roman numerals. I ended up really liking those robot characters, and I, I didn't think I was going to like them at first. But I think that they had a good story. <laughs> Look, restarting. But I, I hate, yo, know, these... I hated that, their green words and the bubbles. Yeah, because this to me is was a it, thought. I thought, were they talking telepathically or what? Yeah, this to me is this, this. But I guess it was just they were changing their bubbles so you can... I really just did not like their characters. So their characters are basically reporters that are on this scoop of this hazel creature that's been born. You know, and I don't know. It's just, it didn't They're go anywhere. Oh, look at this. Story. Oh, my God. So there goes your <laughs> vaginal birth. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> with a butthole and everything. And the androids have that blue blood. Very, like, aliens. Oh, and this is um, uh, this is um, the the mom. That's Alana doing her, like, her stint on Broadway. Yeah, see, like, he can't hide, like, the fact that he's mad as hell. Yeah, that arc was kind of like, ah, uh, whatever, with the whole Broadway stuff. Mm-hmm. She's just like a black cat right there. I'm holding it. Yeah, fuck it, I quit. So it's funny how even though they're not humans, they talk just like us, like in their, their mannerisms and like, mm-hmm. here they go, look at this, boom. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Oops, I made a universe. I forget what that's from. I don't think that's really a part of the story. Oh, that's just, uh, I think it's Liz entertaining. This looks like Pro- Promethea. Like, they just right? put a little bit of Promethea in this part. What about that whole stuff? Marco did. Marco held it down, though. You can't say he didn't. Yeah. Oh, there's the dragon. Yeah, here's the female dragons. Oh, we'll show you the male dragon I, and what I feel he's like doing. We're, we're, I hope, this is like, oh, God. That's her urine. Ugh. No, I think without context, it's not a spoiler, you know? Okay. But you gotta see how they do this male dragon. You wanna do it yet? Yeah, it, he's going. Cause she tell. Here's the stalks, like brother or something, right? But from the, he's from the same planet as me. Same species for sure. <laughs> Big AF. Damn, hitting her pregnant. That's crazy. Yeah. Tell you, a lot of sex, man. Yeah, there's a lot. And we didn't even get to, like, all the different kinds of sex. I don't think we're going to find this shit. Man. Yeah, I think we're past it. It's okay. Oh, here he goes. Oh, so, sucking his own dick. This dragon. Ugh. Again, I hate every scene oh, with that, them. That Did you enjoy them? No, they were just so boring. So after he's got injected with the dragon spunk to make himself uh, heal, he's fat as hell. His dog reminded me of Deadpool. Really? That wasn't his dog, it was his sister's dog. Yeah. Because he had Lion Cat, it was his. So they show Hazel like getting bigger in each, and she gets bigger in the comics, which is cool. I'm surprised they're having sex again. Yeah. <laughs> they go through a lot in their relationship. Oh, this guy was kind of crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Are we gonna see the androids boner popped up? Oh, don't! Is it right here? Oh. oh, what about these time suck creatures? Uh, in see, outer I, space? Didn't, I didn't understand what was gonna happen if. I think it just was like a black hole or something. The intro was wiener. Was it over here? Why do you want us to show it? Not really. Yeah, this last book, we, uh, we went through fast. So, huh, I, I, I like this, and you didn't like it. But let me just say, um, oh, a, ca- a character dies, and it says, and then, and I'm like, damn, blackness. Damn, blackness. Damn, just forever black. That's how I kind of looked at that. And I was like, damn, that was kind of cool how they played with yeah, I like, color I like that. that. Yeah, I loved it. I was like, damn, shit was tight. Look, welcome to abortion town. That was crazy. This, I was like, uh, remember the gum? Zebra stripe gum? Oh, no, no, but remember the different horse creatures? It's a guy who had sex with a half horse, half oh, f- female. But the but it wasn't a centaur because the right. horse still had a head. He was literally just growing up. That was the son because it was the two species. The father was a regular, like, Whoa. humanoid. Do you remember that? Oh, uh, hold on. Are we, we going to find that? I don't know. Here we go. Yeah, see, look. This guy oh, she was. had sex with her but made him, which is like he's a mixture of both. Look, yeah, he's oh, so but, but this head is, like, dead. It's like a skull. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I really enjoyed this book, man. Hated this bitch. Oh, yeah. I was like, yo, kill that one, man. Her ship was dope. Yeah. A little bit of wee wee. I hate these guys. All right, so I guess that's enough. This part I like. Flip it. Oh, it's right here, yeah. Yeah, she leaves him and she's like, oh, oh, I don't know. No. Well, no, he he gets away. Yeah. See, it was another wing. I forget what his role is. He was like some kind of like political person from the wings. Mm-hmm. All right, don't keep flipping because you don't want to. Oh, the it. end, end? Oh, yeah. okay, sorry. All right, guys, so that's our review of Brian K. Vaughn's saga from Image Comics. Good. Hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, I believe they also have trade paperbacks, and I think there's one volume compendium, which is like a big soft cover omnibus that collects this run. If you want to read it, but uh, you you definitely enjoyed it. Did we did we read this thing? Fast. I wanted to read it ever since I saw this book with the titty out. If you got a titty out, I just scratched that the whole thing. city's out. Yeah, I heard that. Sorry. It's probably gonna be like. Yes, yeah, it's, you have to cut that. Out. <laughs> So, um, the, these were also very fast-paced reads. I thought yeah. it was going to be, like, dense, but, man, it was quick. I was, like, page-turners. Yeah, each book was, like, maybe a little bit over a day of reading. I was knocking some out in a day. Yeah, it, well, the final book you've knocked out in a day. For sure. All right, but let us know what you think about Saga in the comments below. Make sure to hit that like on the way out and subscribe to the channel because we're dropping content every day. Stay minty. Peace.